Good morning, YouTube community. This is Los Angeles Prepper here. Just finished making a 17 minute video that was unnecessarily long, way too long. Um, thank you. I'd like to give a quick thank you to Prepper Bob for giving me a shout out. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Prepper Bob. Um, always appreciate shout outs. And Prepper Bob, do something with that green screen. Okay, I don't know if you have video editing software, but um, if you've ever heard the term chroma key or color keyed, but I, I'm sure you painted that wall green screen because you were thinking about doing green screen because almost, and if you didn't paint it like that and you just like green, that's, that's cool. But, uh, you know, just for the heck of it, you got it right there. You got the green screen right there. And I know the lighting takes a little bit of energy, but... Um, I would love to see you do some green screen stuff. So please, if only for my own entertainment, um, you know, if you need some advice on choosing some uh, video editing software, give me a holler. I'll do some research. I don't know offhand, but but anyways, let's get Prepper Bob to do some cool video stuff with that green screen because it's it's so easy, or the green wall, if you will. Um, he did a video. God, he, he does so many great videos, you know, he's just, he's touching on all these things. Let me just, uh, you know, he's talking about gadgets, talking about knowing your town. He's talking about being a gray man, um, talking about where should I move? Will we ever be ready? You know, personal security. I mean, he's just, he's really touching on like these key prepper things that, um, it's so important. It's so important to talk about. Um, so you know, kudos to him for just like somebody was saying in, on a, their while a uh, while ago on their video, like we're all in the same frequency. You know, they were talking about humans, but I think I think in life, as funny as it sounds, and maybe you don't think this is funny, I think we do find other people on the same frequency. Like my best friend Nick and I, always been on the same frequency, um, and we just. It's like we resonate when we're together, you know, we just, we're just stronger. We're like, uh, you know, both signals come together where our amplitude is twice, whatever it was before, because we're perfectly in phase, not to get too nerdy on you, but some of you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to touch on a couple of things that he was talking about. One of them, um, you know, he was talking about this dream where all this prepper stuff fell on him and he was like, oh, you know, do you ever regret prepping? And things like that. And I don't think he really regrets prepping, but um, maybe the dream just like left him with some emotion when he woke up and they can do that. I can certainly do that. Um, you know, I don't, I will say quickly that when I first, I first kind of came into prepping from the whole like collapse, you know, collapse videos were my gateway drug into prepping, so to speak. So, um, you know, because I was a business major and, uh, or I am a business major. So I, I was a little bit more tuned into things like the economy and, you know, balance sheets and things like that. And, uh, I also worked in real estate, um, for several years, I started working real estate right before the downturn. So, um, it was like, you know, I, I got thrown in the trenches literally. So I might have slightly more uh, realistic or cynical or, you know, um, less rosy pictures about the economy because I saw what happens, you know, I saw what happens when 100% of your investment or a good portion of your investment is just in stocks. Um, your portfolio will vanish, uh, you know, in a matter of weeks, like everyone's did. Now, the stock market came back this time and it has historically always come back, but um, at any rate, regret. Regret about prepping. I feel like I'm able to balance um, how much energy I put into prepping fairly well, um, balance how much money I spend on it. Um, uh, in the video that I just made that I didn't publish, um, I talked about Prepping is kind of a school of thought, a belief system, if you will. So it can give things in your life more meaning. Um, like 
you know, buying the Marlin 22. I've always wanted a, you know, rifle and to have, you know, a very modest amount of firearms for hunting and plinking and, you know, personal security, God forbid. Um, but I think it was really prepping that kind of got me into that mindset, like, instead of, you know, I'll buy it next month, I'll buy it next year to, you know what, just, just do it, do it and get it done and have it. Um, you know, buy a little varmint rifle, train with a little varmint rifle. Uh, if shit hits the fan, could I feed myself by uh, catching a couple squirrels locally? Yeah. Is that part of my long-term viability? No. There are so many people in the city that, you know, you'd be better off raising squirrels, to be honest, than, uh, you know, trying to domesticate some meat squirrels, which would be a bit of work, you know, they, they, the smaller the rodent, the smaller the mammal, the faster they procreate or rodent or whatever. But, um, you know, so do I, how do I feel about my prepping? I love it. I'm going to be honest. I love it to death. Um, I love the outdoor stuff. I love the tool stuff. I love the firearm stuff. I love the community. I love the MacGyverness of it. You know, how to start a fire without matches, how to filter water without a filter. Um, just it, it's it's learning based it's learning based and it's community based and it it ties in strongly to who i am as a person you know helping other people being competent in a variety of ways you know i don't i'm not trying to be a, a jack of all trades but a lot of preppers try to kind of develop multiple branches on the tree of life um you know if they have some camping skills they're not just going to stop at that if they have some gardening skills they're not just going to stop at that if they have firearm skills, you know, and you get the idea. They try to become, you know, this well-rounded person, sort of like indicative of um, almost like a frontiersman or frontierswoman, you know, where we were all self-sufficient. We all took care of everyone. And when we were able to take care of ourselves, we were able to a certain extent to, to help take care of our neighbors a little bit, you know. I'm not talking about like feeding your neighbors all year, but, you know, like giving your neighbor a couple chickens or a goat or, you know, if like the difference between giving them a fish and teaching them how to fish, you know, if you give your chicken a few neighbors and say, I'm going to teach you how to raise chickens, you know, so you can raise your own chickens and then they start raising chickens and making eggs. Then when someone comes to them and says, hey, I'm kind of hungry, can I have an egg or two? That neighbor can say, I tell you what, not only am I going to give you a couple eggs, I'm given going to give you a few egg laying chickens and maybe in a couple weeks or whatever, I'll give you a rooster and I'm going to teach you how to grow chickens or raise chickens, you know? So, and I mean, you know, how much would that cost you to give someone a chicken? You know, the, they basically procreate for free. Um, after you have a rooster and a chicken or, you know, take whatever your startup cost, your chicken startup cost is, you know, you're not, nobody ever needed to start a Kickstarter page to raise chickens. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have, but nobody ever needed to. So, you know, I love prepping. Um, it, it ties into who I am as a person, the life experience that I have, it even ties into my career being an engineer. Um, you don't think we're going to need to uh, fix structures and build things, mechanical contraptions when shit hits the fan? You know, I would love to be just labeled like the engineer and just go around and Hey, my this broke, my that broke. We need to build this. We need to design that. You know, help me out. That would just, I would love it. I would love to, you know, it would be nice if society doesn't collapse so I can buy a boat and some land and I can keep buying firearms and things like that. But if society does collapse and I go around just fixing stuff for people, I, I can deal with that. You know, I can deal with that. Either way, in this life, I'm going to work with my hands. God help me. I don't care. Uh, what the dollar's worth, I don't care what North Korea is doing. I don't care if we have power. You can't stop. You can't stop me. You can't stop me from working with my hands. You know, I'm going to be building sailboats. And man, this thing was watching a video the other day. That thing was giving me OCD, that drawer being open. So if that was bothering you, I'm sorry. But um, I think I'm going to put this next uh, video kind of commentary response into another one because I don't want to make long videos too much, but But thanks again prepper Bob for the shout out um, 
man, it, it, you know, I could spend hours just commenting on like all the content that he's putting out. And, you know, he was, he was saying nice stuff about me, you know, that just getting channel started out, could use a few more subs. Um, I mean, I think we could all use some more subs, but, you know, really appreciate it. Really appreciate kind words. I've, I've come to learn in life that, you know, kindness and generosity, no matter how, how easy or how, you know, no matter the potential that everyone has inside them to feel that way, when someone actually takes the energy to share that with another person, it's, it's a huge difference. There's a big, big difference between being a kind person and sharing your kindness with someone else. You know, or being someone that feels strong about the community versus actually, you know, getting involved in the community. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.